Number 10. James A. Garfield had one of the poorest upbringings of any United States president. His father died when he was an infant, leaving him to be raised by a single and often penniless mother. He spent much of his youth fighting with his peers, who bullied him for his status. One of his few escapes was reading. He continued to read as he got older, educating himself to eventually become a teacher, then a lawyer, and then enter politics. When he ran for president, the story of his upbringing was used to bolster his public appeal. Privately, however, Garfield always resented his childhood. Quote, I lament that I was born into poverty, and in this chaos of childhood, 17 years passed before I caught any inspiration, a precious 17 years when a boy with a father and some wealth might have become fixed in manly ways. Number 9. Garfield was the only sitting member of the House of Representatives to ever be elected president. Including Garfield, 18 presidents served in the House at some point in their lives. During Garfield's time in the House, he served alongside both Rutherford B. Hayes and then William McKinley. Number 8. Garfield was the second American president to be assassinated. He's one of four assassinated presidents and one of eight to die in office. His term was only 199 days, the shortest presidency, second only to William Henry Harrison, who died after only 31 days. Number 7. Garfield is often ranked as one of the most intelligent presidents, often being ranked in the top 10 or even top 5. He loved to read, was fluent in both Greek and Latin, and, prior to entering politics, had planned to become a math professor. As an Ohio representative, he developed a passion for statistics and tried to incorporate his knowledge into legislation. Number 6. Garfield had five children who lived into maturity. Three of his sons had notable careers in their own right. Harry Augustus was a lawyer and public official. James Rudolph served on Theodore Roosevelt's cabinet as Secretary of the Interior, and Abram, the youngest son, was a successful architect. Number 5. Despite being from the same party as Abraham Lincoln, Garfield's support for Lincoln had often been begrudging. As a young representative, Garfield fell in with the radical Republicans, who favored extensive reparations for the freedmen and harsh treatment of Southern whites. He found Lincoln to be far too moderate, and even wanted him replaced for the 1864 ticket. In the years after Lincoln's assassination, Garfield's views of him softened, perhaps indicative of his own move to the more moderate wing of the party. Number 4. Garfield is the only president who had served as an ordained minister. In his early 20s, while a college student and teacher, he preached at neighboring churches to help earn an income. He also held revival meetings. However, he was never the official minister for any particular church. Number 3. When nominated at the Republican National Convention, Garfield was a dark horse candidate. The convention was bitterly split along factional lines, with the three main contenders being Ulysses S. Grant, James G. Blaine, and John Sherman. It took the convention 36 ballots for Garfield to be decided upon. And up until the final three ballots, hardly anyone, not even Garfield himself, considered him as a candidate. Garfield was actually giving a speech in support of Sherman when delegates became impressed by his rhetoric and presence and considered him a viable compromise candidate. Number 2. Garfield was a strong supporter of civil rights for African Americans. While serving as a young general in the Civil War, he didn't believe the war to be simply about preserving the Union, but to be a holy war against slavery. Because of his own upbringing, he empathized with the plight of freedmen left destitute in the South. By the time he became president, even Northerners had lost interest in helping the freedmen, yet Garfield still made it part of his agenda and even mentioned it in his inaugural address. Number 1. Garfield was mentored by Abraham Lincoln's Secretary of the Treasury, Salmon P. Chase. Both were radical Republicans, and as Chase had no son of his own, he treated Garfield like a surrogate son. He lived with Chase for a time, and the two regularly played chess together. Chase had always resented Lincoln, and some believe this influenced Garfield's feelings. 
For more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. To show your support and have your name featured in the credits, consider making a donation on Patreon of either two, five, or fifteen dollars a month. Patreon link in the description below.